Hey guys, welcome back to another tech video. So in the last year, I've upgraded both my laptop and my desktop to the new M1 platform. So today I want to kind of discuss the differences between these two machines. This is the cheapest laptop that Apple makes. This is the most base model MacBook Air. Under a thousand dollars, you get everything that you need in the box and it is an absolutely amazing value proposition. This is the Mac Studio. This one cost me two and a half thousand dollars almost. It's been upgraded a little bit, but this is targeted towards, you know, pro consumers, prosumers. And I wanted to explain the differences between these two devices today and how much of a difference it makes in day-to-day -day use. I've been using the MacBook Air for the last year and for 95% of people out there, I would blindly recommend the MacBook Air. I did a whole video about why I love the MacBook Air so much. I gave 10 reasons in that, but some of the highlights are the battery life is absolutely amazing. The screen is beautiful. The computer makes zero sound. The keyboard and trackpad are amazing. If you look at both these devices, this laptop has the M1 base model with seven core GPU. And this has the M1 Max with 32 core of GPU. This one only has eight gigs of RAM. This one has 32 gigs of RAM. But in day-to-day -day use, you don't really see too much of a difference between these two machines. And the reason for that is the M1 architecture is so good and so efficient. The single core performance of both these machines is actually on par. It's about, you know, you get about 1700 points in Geekbench for single core on both these machines. So for everyday single core threaded performance tasks like web browsing, if you're working Google Docs, using Word, Excel, you know, those kind of things, they're gonna open equally fast on these, feel equally fast. So, you know, there's no real performance gains that you get over there. So that's why I would say for most users who are using these laptops as web browsing tools, as productivity tools for Word, PowerPoint, Excel, those kind of things. If you want to do some light video editing or audio production, these machines are absolutely capable of doing it. My wife has a 2018 Intel MacBook Pro, which I paid double the amount that I paid for this machine. It's got the same amount of RAM. It's got an Intel i7 processor, but this thing absolutely annihilates that machine. This is like my default option that I recommend to people if they're looking to buy a computer today. Uh, it's only $200 more expensive than the Mac Mini, which has similar performance, but this has a few advantages. It's silent. It has an inbuilt beautiful retina screen inside it. Of course, you get the keyboard and mouse all built into the machine. As I said, 95% of people should be buying this machine. It is absolutely amazing and you'll be super happy with it. But there are a few limitations when it comes to pro workflow. The first limitation is the number of ports. You only get two Thunderbolt ports on this. So if you want to power the device, that's one port gone. And then the second port, so you could connect it to a Thunderbolt hub or a USB-C hub. And that alleviates like 90% of people's requirements, right? Like you can plug a bunch of USB devices into this. You can plug maybe a secondary Thunderbolt device into that one. but it does restrict your speed and it's just not as convenient as having more ports on this. If you don't care about that sort of thing, you don't need super fast SSDs or something connected to your computer, then this is the machine for you. The other issue that I faced with this computer is multi-monitor support. So if you wanna plug in more than two monitors into this device, it's not possible. It won't support it natively. There are a few dongles and things that you could use, but you won't get the full 4K 60 Hertz experience that you will with some of these other devices. Now, RAM restrictions. This thing has eight gigs of RAM. And honestly, it's very hard to saturate the RAM on these machines because in my previous video, as I said, the SSDs on these are super fast. So even when it swaps memory from RAM and you're using more than eight gigs of RAM, it performs really well and it's super optimized for the processor. But yes, when I do have like Chrome open with like 20 tabs open and I'm doing some research and I have Final Cut open in the back, things do start to slow down a little bit. It's not significant. If you can bear with that slight slowdown and little bit loading of memory here and there, it still works amazingly well. So that's enough about the MacBook Air. 
Let's look at what the Mac Studio offers. First of all, this one has the M1 Max processor inside it. So this has two more performance scores on it than this. So of course, for multi-core workloads and apps that are designed to use multi-core performance, this thing is gonna be amazing. It's also got a media engine inside it. So that makes a huge difference when it comes to things like video editing. So if you are a video editor, the M1 Max processor is gonna give you a huge jump in terms of performance on the timeline as well as for rendering things out. So I did a comparison between these two. I'm not gonna get into benchmarks and things like that, but this one is about twice as fast as this when it comes to video exports and being able to support like multicam 4K, video streams this one will do a much smoother job of it than this next this one comes with 32 gigs of ram as standard till now i have got to about 24 gigs of ram usage maybe 28 that's with having logic open as well as affinity photo and final cut pro and chrome with like about 30 40 tabs inside it and powering my triple monitor desk setup over there it's all buttery smooth on the m1 max so this supports one external monitor this thing supports five external monitors so i have three monitors behind me as you can see and then I could add a fourth and a fifth monitor. I do think that's a little ridiculous to have five monitors, but I can see workflows. I never imagined I'd have a three monitor setup, so I can imagine workflows where you might need a four or a five monitor setup as well. So this thing has your back if you want multi-monitor support. The IO on this is brilliant. You got four Thunderbolt ports at the back, plus a 10 gig ethernet connection. So if you guys don't know, most computers have one gig ethernet connection. This thing has 10 gigs, so future-proof. You know, like 10 years from now, when we're transferring terabytes of data back and forth, you need a 10 gigabit ethernet connection to be able to support that speed. So this thing is future proof. You got two USB ports, HDMI and a dedicated headphone jack. And in the front, you get two more USB ports and an SD card slot. So I don't need a USB-C dongle or a Thunderbolt dongle to be able to set up my massive triple display setup with external camera and sound card and external mic. So that makes the whole cable management thing really simple. And Thunderbolt docks can get really expensive. I was looking at a couple of Thunderbolt docks and they range in the three, $400 range. So, you know, you save on that when you get this. What sucks about this is you don't get a keyboard or mouse in the box. I just bought the new Magic Keyboard with Touch ID and that's like $150 accessories. You have to pay that on top of the two and a half thousand dollars I already paid for this. I already have a mouse, but if you didn't, then you'd have to buy that as well. You also have to get an external display with this. So there's a lot more to consider when you're buying something like the Mac Studio. The benefits, of course, are there. If you have a workflow that requires it, then of course, the performance is here. And for me personally, as I get older, time gets more valuable. If I can save even 15, 20 minutes a day because I have a faster machine, I will spend the extra $1,000 or $1,500 in order to save my time. I produce this vlog. I have a podcast as well called Startup Hustle Middle East, which I do with my wife. So editing both those things takes a lot of time. If I can export a video in 10 minutes on this versus 20 minutes on this, that's where you know the value of this guy comes in. Also, I did spec up this to the 32 core GPU and I did add a one terabyte hard disk in here and that's why the cost went up. But I think for most people, the $2,000 version is good enough. I love the thin and light form factor of the MacBook Air. This thing is absolutely a beast of a machine, silent. If you want the best of both worlds, you can get a 16 inch or a 14 inch MacBook Pro. It'll perform similarly to the Mac Studio. It's somewhat of a form factor of the MacBook Air, especially the 14 inch model. But I prefer having a dedicated desktop where I can plug in all my accessories and have this as my workstation. And this is my little portable, sleek laptop, which I can carry around and has amazing battery life. And I must say, Apple's been killing it with their M1 series of computers. The MacBook Air, the MacBook Pro, and even the Mac Studio are amazing devices. And if you look at the cost to performance ratio of what you're getting right now, Apple's actually reduced their pricing in recent years, because this can perform similarly to a Mac Pro, which used to cost $5,000. Those are my thoughts about the M1 MacBook Air and Mac Studio, my two computers. I love these babies and I'm so glad I got them. Probably won't be upgrading either of these for the next five to six years. If you guys like this video, hit that like button, leave me a comment, subscribe to watch more videos like this and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.